my local hobby store, shout out to shout out to Hobby Center. Uh they do this thing once a year where they kind of reserve the parking lot space uh adjacent to the store uh for people to come in and just park their cars and just sell a bunch of their collection out the back of their car. So that includes a lot of a lot of collectors that frequent the store, frequent uh hobby center and they'll just straight up sell a bunch of stuff there from their collection for like really really good prices you know like because uh if you've been in this hobby for long enough you'll have a backlog everyone that's that's a part of this from carmi to to jose eddie all of them know that like eventually you just accumulate a big ass back chit chat this is the main thing that i bought what Tamiya Triceratops Diorama Kit. So this is this has everything you need for <laughs> for like a diorama. So not only does it have the Triceratops, but it has two uh, Velociraptors and a couple of smaller animals, some fish, a frog, and a amphibian of some kind. Yes, yeah, so this is from Tamiya. Tamiya, uh, they make a number of paints and stuff. So yeah, so interesting, very interesting. And yeah, welcome everyone, by the way, if I hadn't said it already. Hello, welcome Vanilla, welcome, welcome, welcome Arch. That have come while I was uh, on break. Uh, this model kit here, as you can see, the box is kind of dinged up, unfortunately. But I got it for like half off. I don't, I'm not sure what it is, how much is it full price. I looked on eBay generally, but sometimes you can't really go by the price that's on eBay. Derpin, we're Derpin, Carmi? So let's take a look. Let's take a look at this. And yeah, the, the box is dinged up, but I got it on a good deal. It was like 25 Canadian dollars. So, so I don't know. What is that like? A, like a, a can of beer for Americans? I don't know. How much, how much of that is in, in, uh, in booze, I don't know, <laughs> in bullets. Uh, yeah, so there's some different colors for the dinosaur, which is cool. There's no actual pictures of the dinosaur, like the actual plastic model kit, only uh, only an illustration. So let's see, let's crack this open and see. There is a, a fairly noticeable din, ding, but I think it's gonna be fine. Oh, look, it says it's made in the Philippines. That's kind of cool. That's kind of cool. I didn't know that. We're going to take a look at this. We're not going to build it today, but we just want to take a nice... Take stock of what's in here. Whoa. Holy crap. This is going to be huge. Look at that. Oh, wow. There's a... Uh, here. Let's open this up. Oh wow, this is actually f quite large. Judging by the body. And that's cool, a little plaque. Triceratops. Late Cretaceous Western North America. Damn. West Coast, West Coast. Hollow on the inside. Uh, really nice detail on the scales. Let's take a look. Might be a little hard to see, of course. But yeah, wow. Very nice. And there's the uh, the head. Fairly large head. The eyes are very... <laughs> the eyes are so vacant looking, but of course you have to kind of paint the pupil in and everything. Wow. Pretty neat. I feel like it's going to be pretty straightforward. Might have to do some putty work to fill in some gaps, but that's no biggie. Wow! Texture looks nice. Yeah, not bad, right? Uh, this kit, it's... What does it say? I think it says 1994? 1994! This is so old! <laughs> Holy smokes! I don't know if this was made in 1994, if the original design 
comes from 1994 and it was printed more recently, but whoo, that's old. That is really, really old. And, you know, I feel like the way that we understand dinosaurs today has evolved a lot. Like, you know, the way we depict dinosaurs, our understanding of the, uh, the physiology of them, um, the anatomy of them. So, so this is definitely like kind of like a relic from a from a different time, but I don't think that's a bad thing. I don't think that's a bad thing because uh, it's fun. It's just in general, it's kind of fun to to look at these different sort of depictions of dinosaurs. So here's the two Velociraptors. Velociraptors, old type. What's up, old type? Nice to see ya. Arch ninety four. Yeah, Jurassic Park era when the when dinosaurs were popping off. Why is there a human? Uh, that's a good question. And they that was not even shown on the box. I think it's kind of like... Uh, I, I You know what? There's no real explanation. But I like it. I don't mind. I don't mind that there's an oldie. An old, uh, an old fogey here. Observing. That is fun. Yeah, so this kit comes with not only the Triceratops, but two Velociraptors. Uh, a fish... Uh, uh, one large fish, three smaller fish, so that is pretty neat. Um, a large tree, a scale. Yeah, this is one in thirty-fifth scale, I think. So, um, so that is actually in line with a number of other kinds of model kits that you can buy, which is fun in terms of like if you want to mess around and do something wacky. Fish. <laughs> Uh, the older kits get more expensive, like trading cards. Um, I think in some cases, yes, but in other cases, like, I would say that because, because like, model kit making technology improves so much over time, that, like, older kits look old, and that, that feeling of, like, an old kit and the design isn't all that desirable, uh, in the face of like new advancements in technology in the engineering of kits where things can be more accurate like your gundams can be more more unique and stuff like that hey eddie's off he's on his little break yes so we're just looking at this dinosaur kit eddie very interesting stuff have you ever gotten these kits at, in the store because this is a, it says 1994 dude <laughs> I don't know if that means the original design was from 94 or what. Oh, look at this. Whoa, palm foliage. Hemp palm foliage. Whoa, this is crazy. Look at this. Yeah, no, this is Tamiya, actually. This is Tamiya. I can show you the box cover. Look at that. Yeah, how's it going, old type? Triceratops diorama set. 1 in 35th scale. Yeah, the Bandai ones. Yeah, those are like the new ones. This is like, I think, quite old. Although at the Fukuoka Hobby Show, they or Shizuoka Hobby Show, they showed these. They had these all on display at the Tamiya booth. Vanderlee's T-Rex. I don't think so. Oh, maybe. Hemp palm footage. Uh, foliage. Is this made from hemp or what? Is that what they're saying? There's like a texture to it. Look at that. <laughs> Crepe paper? Look. Is this made from hemp? Old type chillin. Last day of the uh, of this awesome week in Zelda building kits. Life is good. Hell yeah. That's what I like to hear. How are you liking that Zelda? And here's the diorama base. There's the diorama base. So this is a, a really nice opportunity to work off of. Yeah, look, it says 1994. Holy smokes. Holy smokes. But yeah, you know what? In the uh, When I was looking up some examples of this kit, they uh, had like a river running through this. So we could use resin. I, I've, I've used resin to make water. So we could do something like that. We can kind of build up the uh, the sides to make it more like a river. That might be cool, right? Oh, you showed it off uh, t 
to sell the dinosaur kits. Hell yeah. Vanderlee helping helping a brother out. Helping out helping out Eddie make some sales. <laughs> the builds in Zelda right now are OP. You know what? I was watching uh, someone just this morning make a Zelda with uh, on Twitter a Zelda clip, and they made this big ass robot, right? Which you know people have been making robots in Zelda, but you know they're very simplistic looking. They look kind of hodgepodge, bashed together, right? But this guy actually kind of looked at like the contours of the shapes that exist in the game and created a really like aesthetically pleasing Gundam or mecha looking mobile suit it, oh you saw that eddie yeah it was it looked good that was the thing was like like uh like i said like people have been making robots and they look fine they look cool they shoot fire out of their dick and all of this stuff but this one actually had like a cool looking style to it and i'm like wow this is like week two of zelda can you imagine like in a month's time in a year's time like the kind of things people will be making in zelda it's insane yeah that was just cray cray, kind of overwhelming. Amazing stuff. Let's just take a quick look at this instruction booklet. Look at this. We've got a tech tree, you know, the way you want to evolve your Pokemon. Where's my sword of pointing? Depending on, on what kind of uh, evolution stone that you apply to your Pokemon. Oh, and here's an example. Look, that's going to look so cool. And look, they applied uh, resin or some kind of reflective clear coat on top. Because, uh, yeah, the, the, the raptor here is reflected in the water. So that would be really, really fun to do. I think we can make this. We can go even harder with this, though. Like, for, as cool as this diorama is, I think we can go even harder. You only know because uh, that's my feed. Yeah, definitely a lot of people have been posting Zelda content, which is, I'm all about it. Listen, I love to watch. I love to see people do cool stuff in Zelda. Uh, uh, I, I, I can't necessarily play it right now. I feel like my money's tied up in other things, but I'm enjoying watching other people play. Unfortunately, all the stuff, all the information here is in Japanese, so I don't understand. But this looks like, uh, it, this would, looks like it'd be really nice reading material to have alongside your building to kind of like, you know, supplement your building with some, some educational stuff. You know, if you can have fun while learning, then, then it doesn't feel like learning, <laughs> which sounds so lame, but yeah, like I love it when I can, I love it when I can learn something and have fun at the same time. And there's the uh, the palm fronds made out of hemp or something like that. So you're going to have to cut them out with a scissor. Interesting. Uh, okay, the plaque. There's all the fish. You have to have the fish swimming around the water. Oh, and you put a clear plastic thing to be... Okay, we might not use that, though. We might just do a resin pour. Uh, instead of uh, putting the piece of clear plastic, we might do a resin pour. Uh... <laughs> There's, like, the human for some reason. There's the human. Ah, wow. There's some painting tips. Spray paint, airbrush... You know, some maybe some dry brushing, painting the eye. Wow, there's actually some good information here. Oh shoot, is this English? Oh, there's English. Okay, but this is for building a boat. <laughs> okay. Oh shit, it's the same thing but in English. Oh. Okay. Cool. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, it's all in English over here. Sweet. black wash dry brushing oh, okay cool right on well let's put this stuff away uh, <laughs> I was just gonna say uh, actually building this kit is probably a long ways away we're probably going to get to this uh, far in the future 
because uh, I've got my plate full. I've got quite a lot of stuff already on the go, but I am excited for sure to dig into this because it does look really fun. And yeah, I got it on sale um, yesterday, so I mean, win-win. And yeah, the, the kit, the plastic seems nice. I feel like there's probably going to be a fair amount of like uh, seam line removal involved. We're going to have to kind of clean things up. And, uh, and of course it's all gray, so it's going to require painting, but that's not a biggie. No biggie. Yeah, that's, uh, that's uh, one of the things that I bought at the uh, Hobby Center flea market sale and I think this was a pretty good find like like I said uh, most of the stuff there was tanks and cars and airplanes battleships all that stuff so uh, when I saw this I was like let's go there was like a what is it called um, from Kotobukiya hexagear there was a hexagear kit but you know it was on sale but at the same time I, I just didn't really feel like getting that um there was like a, a small handful of Gunpla stuff, but if I'm going to something like this, I'm here for something unusual that I can get at a good price that I normally wouldn't have bought under other like normal circumstances, right? Something that I might thought might be interesting, just but just never really would have considered buying it at full price. So yeah, boom, there's that. And here's the other thing, not like I didn't buy too much there. Here is the other thing. Someone was selling some two, some painting uh, effects paint, so I got that because you guys know I'm, I'm all in, on uh, I'm all in on the weathering, on the rust. You guys know that I like that kind of stuff. So, so yeah, I've got Tommy a weathering master. This is a uh, A, so it comes with sand, light sand and mud. Uh, the mud, I feel like I'm probably gonna get a lot of use out of. That seems pretty useful. And yes, yeah, sand and light sand. Uh, the seller actually had, this was only five bucks Canadian again. The seller had a few other ones, but uh, I kind of wanted to just round it out to, to 20 because this one was 15. Uh, and this one here is Vallejo, uh, rust, stain, and streaking, acrylic colors for painting models and miniatures. There should be some, it says a uh, step-by-step uh, mod scratch by scratch mod included so there's a kind of a process that they are going to go through so let's take a look at this uh okay uh, acrylic water-based colors for models and miniatures the colors are self-leveling and cover in one application without leaving brush marks they dry to a matte permanent finish all colors comply with the blah 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 and a blah 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 okay cool let's take a look Take a look. Oh, I thought I would have got them all. There you go. 15 bucks for seven paints. One, two, three, four, five, six, eight paints. It's not bad. IMO. Uh, okay, let's see. So we've got a wash. This is a uh, light rust. A light rust wash yeah so very liquidy and I, I'm not familiar with this with this stuff I, I do have some Vallejo paints but uh, I've never bought a set like this Panzer series uh, German black brown okay German black brown so this is so some are washes and some are some are paints this is orange brown. Okay, again, this seems like good for rust, I suppose. And oh wow, what's this? Color system Vallejo light rust. Okay, so is this another wash, or is this kind of like an effect paint? I have no idea. We're gonna have to try this out. I do have a tank model to to paint, so I mean, maybe we'll use uh, this stuff on uh, on that tank model. I have one that I built last year. Hmm. Dark rust. Whoa. What is this though? Is it like straight up paint or is it like an effect paint or is it a wash? It sounds it sounds like paint, like you know, thick ass paint, so 
Interesting. It's made in Spain. All of this stuff is made in Spain. Model Air, uh, orange rust. So this is very thin down. It's a more brighter kind of wash. I think that, yeah, some of these are gonna need a really good mixing. Wood, oh shoot, look, it's wood. Wood in a, wood in a jar, <laughs> wood in a pot. Bottled wood, guys, dang, all right. This is air, so again, it's very thin, but it's not necessarily a wash. And this one here is chocolate brown. Now we're talking chocolate brown. So very interesting here. There's several different, it's all Vallejo, but it's uh, different types of Vallejo paint. This is a wash. It's the only wash in the set right here. And then there's uh, air, two air colors, orange and wood. And then we have two of these, which are called Panzer Aces Acrylic Colors, Color System Vallejo. Uh, seems to be formulated specifically for like, uh, you know, like World War II kits or something like that. So that's really interesting. That's another brand or a product line. And then there's three of like your normal acrylic paints. No, actually this says Panzer Series and then this does not. So they're slightly different. Really interesting stuff. This is all acrylic. Um, I suspect that the person that was selling this probably is a bit more familiar with uh, with like other kinds of paint, like like enamel paints or something like that. That's why he decided to sell off this stuff here. Let's change the camera angle just a bit. Realize that the camera angle is a little awkward, uh, not how I usually like it. So let's just do that. And let's take a look at these instructions. Step-by-step -step instructions, scratch by scratch mod. Scratch mod must be a painter. I don't know, I'm not familiar unless uh, maybe I've seen his work, but, or their work, and I just didn't realize it. Basic techniques, highlights, shadows, feathering and blending. Uh, feathering, blending, the color to be highlighted or shadows are mixed with increasing amounts for the lighter and darker color washes. Okay. Highlighting the figure, the base coat, first increase, second increase, third increase, fourth increase. Yes, this all makes sense. I've this is all stuff that I'm somewhat familiar with. So this this checks out. Shading, yeah. So it's the same, it's just in the recessed area. Okay. Okay, this checks out. And like if you look here. Or what, what happened to my sword of pointing? If you look here, they're sort of displaying the extra levels of paint, uh, uh, you know, as if it's very magnified in and you can see the thickness of the paint, right? Of course, when you're actually applying, applying it to the model, it's not going to look so thick, but that's just to give you an idea of like each subsequent layer. And then in the same way, you look at the uh, the shadow, the shading. It's the same thing. You're kind of increasing another layer, another layer, and it's darker and darker towards the center, and the layers get higher and higher. Step by step, stain and streaking. The colors in this set have been selected to create the effects of weathering or rust stains on metal surfaces, streaking and peeling in specific areas of the wear caused by exposure. All these defined with subtle brush strokes and presented in a simple and detailed process, the step-by-step -step photographs guide the model painter to achieve the final satisfying straightforward results. So this is the, this is the goal, I guess, guys. This is, <laughs> which seems like, I don't know. I, can I do this? I don't know. This is really nice. I'd be very happy if I could produce that. Uh, tips. Let's just read this real quick. So yeah, maybe we'll uh, maybe we'll attempt to do this process uh, on stream 
uh, sometime in the future. So yeah, there's the basic coat, and then you're adding the chips. That, this all checks out. Mm -hmm. And then after the chipping, you're going to add like a rust layer, and then you're really just kind of doing more and more to the rust. Uh, okay, and then there's an airbrush over here, which I don't have. Streaking and staining, cool. Interesting. Yeah, and that's the final result. Right here. That will be very, very cool. If we can actually make that happen, that would be pretty neat. Pretty neat. And if I have fun with this, maybe we'll get more uh, sort of like, uh, uh, you know, painting sets and painting kits. Because there, there's several of uh, things like this, including, I think there's one by, gosh, what's his name? Uh, Murakami or something like that? Uh, a painter who does like, you know, busts and anime statues and stuff. Uh, amazing work. Keigo, Keigo Murakami. There's a paint set like that that includes all the like nice flesh tones that he likes to use and then uh, one assumes there's a very nice like guide in terms of like how to reproduce that something like a tank it's kind of like yeah you can make a tank you can you can do that you can get pretty close to this and it'll look cool but something like painting a human figure um, like a kit like that seems a lot more challenging being able to reproduce what someone like Keigo Murakami has uh, has has done. Uh, he streams on YouTube actually and I'm pretty sure he has an Instagram and Twitter so yeah amazing painter if you want to check out. But yeah that's basically these are the two other things that I got at the uh, at the outdoor swap meet slash flea market uh, over the weekend. Good stuff. Tools. Got those tools gotta always get some new supplies right uh rather than constantly getting kits which i definitely have a lot of a lot of kits